Welcome and welcome back to Find Natural Hair Rocks, where your search for the very best natural hair, beauty, and lifestyle advice stops. If you haven't subscribed to Find Natural Hair Rocks as yet, go ahead and hit up that subscribe button right there. If you're ambitious, you love natural hair and beauty, and you really just wanna become the very best version of yourself. Also, go ahead and hit up that notification bell button so that you can be notified every single time I post a new video, which is usually give or take on Sundays. I'm a successful human rights lawyer, and just like you, I find the natural hair game to be confusing, complex, and just overall really difficult to follow. Yes, I said it. I finally figured out what works, and now today I'm finally starting to retain length at the level at level and speed that I should be retaining my, my length at. First, the very first thing that I stopped doing was buying and using conditioner. I used to purchase conditioner as a rinse out to kind of give my hair what I thought would be an additional boost. Um, I've got fine natural hair. My hair does not like additional anything really other than to be left alone. So this additional step was creating more manipulation. It was creating an unnecessary need for more product. It just was doing the most. And so ever since I stopped purchasing and even using conditioner, I feel like I've been, you know, really seeing my hair flourish and improve. And when I say conditioner, I don't mean deep conditioners. Deep conditioners are very much important. I'm strictly talking about rinse out conditioners. The second thing that I stopped doing to my fine natural hair is applying oils directly to my scalp. Now, back in the day, I would apply oils directly to my scalp and I thought that that was going to increase, you know, the, the growth. I thought my issue was that my hair wasn't growing and all it did was clog up my, my pores and lead to like excessive hair loss. So that's something that I don't do anymore. I don't recommend it. It's just out of my regimen and not happening ever again. Three, I stop strictly finger detangling my hair. I do start my detangling process by using my fingers first. And then I go in with either my Felicia Leatherwood brush to kind of get through all of, you know, the, the, the smaller tangles that my fingers were unable to get through, or I go in with my wide tooth comb. Number four is I stopped buying and trying new products. For the Curlfriend crew and the people who've been here for a while, you might notice that I actually stopped using um, different products. I stopped doing product reviews um, in terms of like, you know, new natural hair care products. And that's because my hair was getting confused. I wasn't really getting a regimen in the sense of, you know, being able to use something consistently and see how that product is working for me consistently. And while those products that I did initially say I loved, I still 100% love them, um, it still stands, I don't really see a need to try a whole bunch of new products anymore because um, I just feel like I know what works. Number five on my list is that I stopped using the LCO method and now I use the LC method. So interestingly enough, my hair actually went from being low porosity to being medium porosity. Not sure how that happened, but it did. And so for that reason, I actually switched up my regimen and the way I, not really switched up my regimen, but switched up the way in which I apply products. So whereas in the past I would apply like a, leave, a liquid, a cream, and then an oil, now I just do a liquid and a cream. The sixth thing that I stopped doing is washing my hair on a weekly basis. Again, this falls in line with just way too much manipulation. So whereas before, you know, I had a really serious dryness issue and I needed to be using, um, you know, a deep conditioner on a weekly basis to get the hydration levels up in my natural hair, I'm no longer in that space, thank God. Um, I've used a lot of really fantastic moisture rich products that have brought my moisture levels back to where they need to be. And so for that reason, it's not a, I don't really necessarily need to be washing my hair um, with shampoo and the whole shenanigans every single week. Now I do it every other week and I've seen so much more, um, you know, just I've seen my hair flourish. I've seen greater length retention. I've seen less breakage. Um, there's far less manipulation on my fine strands. It's just been a really good situation when I just leave my hair alone. Number seven is in, li in alignment with, you know, my hair changing porosity. So because I'm no longer a low porosity natural, I actually stopped using heat on every single wash day, every single deep conditioning session. Now I do actually, I still use it. So if, you know, the weather is particularly dry, it is particularly, you know, my strands need a little bit something more then I will use heat. But for the most part, it's not something that like I have to have to have anymore. So that's really good because, you know, adding heat to the strands definitely does add another layer of time, another layer of effort <laughs> to the natural hair routine. Um, so I'm actually quite grateful for that, that at this point, I don't, I no longer need to do that. Number eight is that um, I stopped following a very strict routine, a very strict regimen. So now with my natural hair, I like to go by how it feels. If my hair feels dry, then I'll moisturize it. If my scalp feels like there's a lot of product builds up on it, then I will go ahead and either do a co-wash or a full wash. But to say that I'm following a strict regimen, um, you know, 
pursuant to like my notes from the past and like, you know, everything I've read online and, and research and stuff like that. I don't necessarily do that anymore. I just don't see the point of it. I think it's far more useful for fine natural hair to be responsive to your hair's needs and to really learn to listen to it. Now, for those of you guys who are new to the game, um, the more you touch your hair, the more you play around with it, the more you care for it yourself, um, is the more you're gonna start to realize what your hair feels like when it's dry, what your hair feels like when it's protein sensitive, and what your hair feels like when it's, you know, got some hydro fatigue going on, which is essentially a fancy term for, you know, just too much moisturization. So um, I'm at that stage now, again, thank God, <laughs> where I can touch my hair and know exactly what it needs. And it does take some time to get there. It does take a bit of intentionality, but I promise you, crow friends, it's something that you can 1000% achieve. Cool friends, if you're still here and you're ambitious, you love natural hair and beauty content, as well as personal success and development content, then you should probably join our secret society. I've got a secret society on Facebook called The Curl Friend Crew, where I share you know, advice, tips daily, where we really talk about different things. I also encourage members to share whatever projects and happenings they have going on in their lives, because you know we're all here to level up together. So if that's something that sounds really cool and interesting to you, then definitely go ahead and find the link down below, submit a free application. It's got about three short questions and yeah, you should be able to enter the society shortly. <laughs> Number nine on the list is that I stopped holding on to dead ends. You guys, I used to hold on to dead ends. I used to not want to get my trims. I used to really avoid losing length. Um, and after doing research, after, you know, seeing what that does, seeing how that impacts negatively the health of our hair, I just stopped doing it. And I've seen so much growth, so much flourishing just by, you know, not holding onto those dead ends. And I also feel like, you know, I'm retaining length as well, which is a fantastic results. <laughs> Number 10 is that I actually stopped pineappling my hair when it's in like, you know, looser, like, like a twist out, a braid out, maybe a wash and go. Um, I used to pineapple my strands to kind of figure to like elongate the curl. I realized for my particular hair type for fine natural hair and the density that I have, it's actually easier and a lot more effective to go ahead and use the banding method. So what I will do is I will literally part my hair into four spots. So one, two, three, four, and I will use like, you know, um, little hair bands to like just go down the entire shaft of the hair and leave the ends out so that I can still have the curl there. In the morning when I wake up, I've got a nice stretch. I still have the curl pattern that I had before is still intact and it, it looks really nice to just continue to work day and continue, you know, with my life. Next thing that I stopped doing was um, using styles that promote excessive tangling. So things like washing goes, things like a curly bun, things like um, a curly afro. Those are styles that I won't necessarily rock as often. I think they're gorgeous. It's just when I rock those styles, I do have a tendency to experience excessive tangling. My wash days are a lot longer because now I've got to really take my time to finger detangle and then go through very, very softly with a tool. I just find it so much easier to like, you know, keep my hair in a stretch state. Um, which is one of the reasons why I really love my Revere. Now, if you guys don't know what the Revere is or you, you know you wanna see it in action, definitely go ahead and check out that link right there. I will definitely leave a link to um, my Revere, my Revere experience, and also um, an ability for you to save some coin with our Girlfriend Crew discount code. So um, yeah, just returning back to that point, I do see a difference in applying styles to my hair on a stretch state as opposed to on a curly state, I find that the tangling is reduced and you know, I'm just able to enjoy a lot of my length um, retention and, and showing off the length retention. Number 12 on the list is more mental and mindset in nature. So prior to really seeing like flourishing going on with my hair, improvement going on with my hair, I would say really bad things about it. Um, you know, I always preach positivity here on Fine Natural Hair Rocks and I practice positivity in my life as well. Um, but I noticed that when it came to my hair, I wasn't as consistent with those um, practices. And so ever since I started applying that same mindset more intentionally to my hair, I've noticed that it's really started to flourish. Those are the 12 things that I stopped doing and I do see a huge difference. Curl friends and new visitors to Fine Natural Hair Rocks, if you've been enjoying this video and you wanna let me know, then go ahead and hit up that like button. Also subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. 
And yeah, leave me a comment to let me know what you do to your natural hair and the things that you've seen work versus the things that you've seen not work so well. Um, I'd love to know because I think that natural hair care is something that's a fluid process. Things are always changing and we're just here to improve our natural hair journeys, our entire life journey really, together. Thank you so much for watching. Definitely go ahead and check out these videos next if you wanna see even more natural hair content from Fine Natural Hair Rocks. Thanks so much and I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.